It felt a little bit cursed to interrupt that song before it finished, so I didn't. <laughs> um, welcome to the Japan stream, everybody. I should preface with, I've had a nap, so I'm very tired. <laughs> Fuck. Um, but we're still gonna stream. We have two things going on tonight. This stream, and then I'm gonna be on someone else's stream later. Um, so trying to get my energy levels back up because I need to be a hundred for the stream later and a hundred for now. Um, so I'm in two minds of how to do this stream with two different options. Um, we have Instagram and TikTok to help us with all the footage that I brought back. So we let's not pretzel down a wee bit so we can see everything that I did. I took so much footage for this stream, well, in general, that um, it's gonna be fairly easy, I feel like, to give you a picture of what it was like. Um, but we also have these, which I think are Pokemon Go cards, actually, looking at the cases again. These are the store exclusive cards. Um, they're definitely Pokemon cards, 100%, um, but they do say Pokemon Go on them right there oh right there so i don't know they could be anything uh we also have the quaxley box to open <clears throat> i got this one because of the mimikyu there's a shiny mimikyu in it uh, mimikyu is definitely top five favorite so if that one to open I think these come with them. Um... It looks like they come with, because obviously it's all in Japanese. Um, I think they come with a map and some damage counters, and, and they definitely come with the coin, because the coin's in the top. And we also have, obviously, the Pikachu one. So we have two to open. Um, so we've got that to do. We've got a lot to do in a short space of time because I need to eat dinner at some point. <laughs> um, so we can either start with the Pokemon cards for sale in Japan only, I've just noticed. Oh. Oh, it's here somewhere. That's really cool. <laughs> um, so we can start with the Pokemon cards or we can start with me talking about Japan and let's see. Um, I have all the gifts, well, all the merch and shit I brought back with me to show as well, um, on my desk. So, it's, I, I, I don't really do, oh my god, I punched my mic. I don't really do just chatting streams. So, it's gonna be, like, a, a trial and error of how to do this stream. This will be going up on YouTube if you ever want to watch it back and be like, what the fuck did she say? Um... So, my phone's on charge, just in case I need it. <laughs> Let's start with background. So, for those of you who don't know, everyone knows by now, but on the 14th of March, I flew to Turkey. And then I flew to Japan. And stayed there for 10 days. And it was an amazing 10 days. Like, the jet lag the shredded feet it was all worth it like honestly i can't even um however there was some drama before it. so i went on the tuesday and it's no secret to anyone anymore that i went through a really rough time before i went to japan um in december well i had a shit november but in december I lost one of my granddads, uh, buried him in January, and then in the first week of February, I lost my other granddad, and then buried him the Friday before I flew to Japan. Now that was rough, that was really fucking rough. <laughs> um, so I was not in a great mindset when I went to Japan, I was quite sad and angry and depressed there's no way to put it 
Um, so I was very apprehensive about going on this trip because part of me didn't believe I was going to make it there <laughs> because my luck is terrible. Um, and the Monday before the trip, so we went on the Tuesday, the Monday, there was a problem with the flights. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not going. Um, on the Monday, uh, you're meant to book in 24 hours before the flight. So it was half past four on the Monday, just after work, finished my last day at work. Still didn't believe I was going. Um, the flight numbers weren't recognised. And it turned out the flights had changed, like a couple of months ago. But we didn't have the right flight numbers. So couldn't book in online, like check into the seats, check in for the bags. So, <laughs> it's half past four in the UK. So it's half past seven in Turkey. And we had to ring Turkey to be like, what the fuck? And the person said, I can't help you. You have to go to the airport and you'll just check in there. And we're like, can you even see us on the flight? Like, is it, is it still happening? Because we have no, nothing to take with us to say that we are on this flight. And they were like, you just have to go to the airport. I can't help you. <laughs> so about an hour after that phone call, because uh, I was streaming that night, if you guys recall, I, well, we rang Turkey again. And the second time, the person was a lot more helpful and gave the new flight numbers over. So we could log in online and everything was okay. Because obviously on a connecting flight, I've never done a connecting flight before. I think this is what was fueling that I don't think we're gonna get there because what the fuck? <laughs> um, so that was all sorted. And then at seven o'clock, I think it was, or something like that, I streamed. And then I said goodbye to you all. As I'd said goodbye to people at work, I said goodbye to my friends, but I still didn't think we were going <laughs> because of this bad luck that I have or I had at the start of the year. So fast forward to 1 p.m. on Tuesday, UK. Now, Baron, you're going to have to bear with mind there is a howling time difference with these flights. So they might not make sense, but it made sense. <laughs> um, and it's Tuesday, 1 o'clock, UK left here said goodbye to the cats and that was fucking hard saying goodbye to teddy and boots for 10 days it, bear in mind my mindset part of me thought i wasn't gonna see him again like i was just so cursed <laughs> at this point um and then we went to birmingham airport and i think this is where my instagram stories kick in so i'm gonna get my instagram up so I've had to use Instagram. Um, I do have a TikTok of the travel, which I can play. Went to Birmingham airport, but to departures, still didn't believe it was happening. <laughs> Left the car, still didn't believe it was happening. <laughs> Cause I used the um, airport parking where they don't even move the car. They used to move the car for you, but they don't even move the car anymore because I think so many complaints about petrol being used and stuff like that. Got to Birmingham Airport. Easy. <laughs> oh, this one just says made it to Turkey. Okay, so I've missed a bit here on Instagram. So, left Birmingham Airport at 4.30pm UK. It's either 4.30 or 4.45. Um, after having to basically rush on the plane because security was so bad. Like it was so bad, um, but they had signs of apologizing that they knew that they were so bad. So <laughs> I guess that makes it okay. Um, had like literally just enough time to go to WH Smith's because hadn't eaten, hadn't eaten breakfast, hadn't eaten anything, hadn't had a shred of food because I was gonna have this massive meal at the airport and then I was gonna have a massive meal at Turkey and then whatever happened on the plane to Japan would happen but we didn't have time to do that because of security. Again, cursed in my mind. I know I'm not, but in my mind at that time I was cursed. <laughs> so I managed to drop the bags off, managed to confirm on a connecting flight, managed to find out with Turkish Airlines how a connecting flight works with the Istanbul part to Tokyo. 
because it was like, do I take my bags off in Istanbul? No, you don't. They go straight to Tokyo. It's it's crazy, but it worked really well. But literally got through security, had enough time to get WH Smith's lunch and then, but couldn't eat it at that point and then get on the plane and then take off and go to Istanbul, which I've never been to. Um, I'll see if I've got the, I don't know how well this is going to play on stream. So, pretzel hush. Pretzel hush. I, d I made this little video about traveling. I'll see if I can narrate it. I don't know how loud it's going to be. This is the thing. So we're kind of using Instagram. And um, we're using Instagram and TikTok to narrate this journey. So this is the car again drops off. Like saying goodbye to the car. Oh, it's not too loud, is it? No. So that was Birmingham. That was the plane. I had a window seat. And that was the first video. Okay, so stop TikTok. No. Oh, no. If I scroll, it goes back to my previous video. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. So we'll stop here. So bear in mind, I didn't have enough time to eat in Birmingham and I'm starving. Literally deep throated the, um, what did I have? A Mexican vegan bean wrap on the plane. And, um, I was like, okay, I can make it, I can make it to Istanbul and I can eat at Istanbul. But we didn't know we had food because it was only a three hour flight. Normally when I fly, I don't have any food on short hauls because it's always EasyJet or Ryanair. But this was Turkish Airlines and neither of us have ever flown this before. So the first meal was this rigatoni. I didn't take a picture of it open, but it was rigatoni with veg and it was really nice. And there was like a cheesecake. I can't remember what that is. Is it prunes? Could have been prunes. Some bread and some water. And it was really nice. It was a nice surprise. So now I'm full. I'm starting to chill out. On the plane, I watched... Um, <laughs> sorry. I watched the new series of You. But in episode one, without spoilers, there is a pretty horrific scene. Like, 20 minutes in. And I had to... Because <laughs> there was a random person at the end of the, of the seats. And I had to turn my phone because this scene just got worse and worse and worse. And it was reflected in the window because it was a night flight. And I was like, oh, shit. And I'm trying to be cool about it. And I'm like, don't look at my phone. Don't look at my phone. Because <laughs> in the seats, there were charges. So you could just keep charging as you go. Um, there was like screens for films and stuff. And I didn't want to watch a film. I wanted to save that for um, the long flight. So I was shitting myself, everyone could see my fucking, like, torture scene, I think it was. Um, so after that, oh fuck, stop scrolling, Heidi, fuck me. Um, so after that, there was Istanbul, that's how long the flight was, three hours. There's Turkey. There's my travel pillow. <laughs> uh, May is Istanbul. So Istanbul was, it was quite a pleasant experience. Um, obviously you don't actually officially enter the country because it's um, international airspace. So you don't get a stamp or anything to acknowledge you were there. So basically as far as Turkey is concerned, I never went there. <laughs> um, got off the flight. There was a woman who was asking if people were, um, let's put Pretzel back on. There was a woman who was asking if people were international transfer, said we were, showed the tickets, and um, went straight through. Uh, literally didn't even have to go through security this time. Um, and went to the lounge. I think we sat around for like an hour and a half. Weren't hungry at all because we'd been fed on the aeroplane, result. Um, I think we got some sweets and then went to the next gate of this huge plane Probably the biggest plane I've ever been on, bar America. But I can't work out if that plane was the same size in America or if it was because I was 10 or 11 and it was just big to me because I was small. So that was a question mark about America. Um, so it was three, three, three in the middle. It might be three or five in the middle. I think it was three in the middle. 
um, but it was huge. It was absolutely huge. Um, and it was a cramped flight. I'm not gonna lie. It was cramped. Even for me with short legs, my legs hurt. <laughs> like it was very cramped. Um, for I think the first flight was like 11 hours. So by this point, done three and three hours, and then this one was eleven, so it's like fourteen hours. Um, three, three, three. Oh, three, three, three. I was in pain. <laughs> you were you're tall. <laughs> I'm short. Um, I wish I had some hindsight with this flight, and this is what I will take to the next time I go to Japan, which is this flight was flying through the night over to like lunchtime. I <laughs> need no more. Uh, it was flying over the hottest desert countries to go to Japan and because I had a window, the window was like scolding to the touch. There's no other way to put it. It was so hot because obviously you're flying through peak heat over the sun, over these really hot countries. Your window feels like it's on fire. You naturally heat up. There wasn't like individual ACs above us either. Um, so I was fucking born. You're trying to sleep through this because at this point, so we take off at Istanbul at two, was it two in the morning? Which there's a three hour time difference with the UK already. So that was 11 UK. So our journey had already been seven hours. If you take that we got, no, longer than that. We left the house at one. So one, two at 11 was the journey so far and you're on this plane you're like i just want to sleep because it's a it was a 11 hour flight need to sleep because can't land in tokyo shuttered i i've never had a problem with leg space funny that <laughs> um so we would try to sleep but my feet swelled my legs hurt i was getting boiled alive <laughs> I was trying to watch Woman King. That was a film that I'd selected for myself to watch, was Woman King. Very good film. I said I wanted to see it in the cinema, but it never happened because it was around October time. And it was a really good film, actually, Woman King. Um, and then I watched that. I tried to watch some anime. It was so fucking hot. <laughs> so many people on this plane as well, which does not help. And they weren't bringing drinks around because it was sleepy time. So we were told to keep the windows down and just let people sleep, but there was no drinks. I was so fucking thirsty. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, but there is a moment I will never forget, and I'm hoping it's next on the TikTok, um, was the first time I saw Japan. And even thinking about it now is making me emotional. Um, the first time I saw Japan was incredible. Oh, this is still Istanbul. Oh, I watched Titanic over China, I remember. <laughs> oh, so we've got breakfast. So basically, I forgot. I recorded, not recorded, I downloaded a lot of comfort films to watch because I didn't know with my anxiety, how I would do on a plane for so long, uh, surrounded by so many people. So I downloaded Titanic and I remember now I was watching the Titanic crash and the pilot announced, we're flying over China, have a look out the window or have a look in the, in the, they had a camera that faced down and a camera that faced forward. So I looked down like, oh my God, there's China. That's where my uncle is. My uncle lives in China. <laughs> I remember having all these thoughts because I was so tired. And then we got breakfast. Oh no, we had a dinner. And then we had this breakfast. Um, so it was like a fruit bowl, um, some granola with yogurt, which I didn't eat, and this scrambled egg. It was one of the. This was one of the first meals that made me want to eat eggs again. It was really good, um, and some water. So I'm trying to work out the time difference because we landed in Tokyo at like ten p.m. Tokyo time. So there's a lot of time fuckery going on in this flight. <laughs> So th that was my first view of Tokyo. And it made me really emotional. And it's making me emotional now. Jesus. <laughs> um, so, oh fuck, 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 fucky, fucky, fuck. 
Um, so seeing Tokyo for me was, um, without being all about it, was a dream coming true in real time. Um, I had always wanted to go to Japan ever since I was like so small um, because I'd grown up with Sailor Moon, Pokemon, Digimon, Dragon Ball Z, um, all the others that I watched that don't come to mind right now. And all I wanted to do was to run away to Tokyo because of how it was at home. And I <laughs> took this footage and I was trying, I was crying, but I was trying to hide it on the plane. I don't think anybody noticed, but like, it was everything I'd wanted. And because of everything in my head, it was a moment of, we made it. <laughs> like, after thinking it wasn't gonna happen, everybody knows, of um, thinking it wasn't gonna happen because of granddad and everything. There it was. <laughs> It was, um, yeah. <laughs> so, land in Tokyo at 10pm. And, uh, oh, paperwork. Paperwork is something I should mention. Fuck. I need to stop scrolling. <laughs> I'll learn not to fucking scroll. So I mentioned here paperwork. Paperwork was very important. Um, there's a thing called Visit Japan. Or is it Travel Japan? Something like that. Um, where you have to fill out your information prior to going to Japan to get cleared, basically. Um, the first QR code you have is for COVID. The second QR code is about you and your criminal background. <laughs> and the third one um, is about declaring what you're bringing into the country. If you had it, you could follow these women that they literally had a picture of it. And they were like, do you have it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And they were like, oh, can we, you know, and that kind of stuff. Go that way, go that way. And we were all right. Um... We got through really quick. The COVID part, straight through. And you could tell the people that weren't prepared because they were given forms and had to go fill out this fucking hench form. Um, then went through passport control. They take your picture and your fingerprints, which wasn't expecting the fingerprints. I was expecting the picture. <laughs> um, as you can imagine, after so long of travel, looked great. <laughs> and then the baggage bit was easy. They would had some dogs sniffing people's bags and someone got caught out by the doggy. I don't know what they had, but they got caught out. And it was in the airport that I, the first message I sent from Japan was to my friend's group chat. Aside from obviously that, oh, we made it, we made it. Was to my friend's group chat that I have with two people from work. Well, who I used to work. One doesn't work there anymore and one does. Was dude, I just use a Japanese toilet and I'm scared because <laughs> it was so complicated and these warnings of the Japanese toilets I just sent a picture to them of do not stand on the toilet <laughs> do not do this in the toilet um and that was the first thing that I sent to my friends from Japan was the toilet because I was so tired and I just made it through. I just had to make the bags. Just had to see the bags come through. Get the bags. Get on a taxi. Go to the hotel. No, I, I think I was delirious. Like I was very dehydrated, and you could tell. You know how you tell. And <laughs> I've never seen it that dark before. Fucking hell. I was badly dehydrated. Um, I also didn't uh, walk around on the plane, and my legs hurt, but I didn't tell anyone because. <laughs> Then they would have been right um but yeah my legs were tingling because they were really painful um so wrist dbt um <laughs> when i got the bags saw the cute puppy didn't interact with the cute puppy because the puppy was doing his job um i wonder what i took for instagram at this point did i take anything for instagram made it to turkey oh yeah so there's the flight from istanbul to tokyo it was 11 hours made it to tokyo I had some numbs on the plane. That's the, the breakfast I told you guys about. And I was very emotional when I saw these welcome to Tokyo signs because again, I had made it. At this point we'd been through baggage. So we were truly in Tokyo. The bags straight through from Birmingham to Tokyo. It was very impressive. I was expecting when the bags to get stuck at Turkey. 
because bad luck. Um, so after going through the three QR scans, made it to Tokyo. We got a taxi transfer, but I wouldn't describe the this luxurious van it felt like that picked us up. It was two seats, separated, loads of leg room, air conditioning. Like, it felt like something in the UK a celebrity would have. It felt really decadent. I got to see Tokyo. Because I don't think it's something until the next morning, but I wasn't delirious dehydrated and my legs hurt it was actually in Tokyo it looked like a regular city to me at that point because I wasn't very aware of what was going on around me um didn't want to take a picture too much in there but that's what it looked like um then got to the hotel this isn't my hotel this is the hotel opposite because obviously I didn't want to put something on Instagram that was my hotel um but this was the one that was directly opposite we said in Nikonbashi um which was very well connected it's a district of Tokyo um and it was really nice and this was the first meal um obviously being 10 p.m in Tokyo by the time we got to the airport sorry sorry by the time we got to the hotel is 11 p.m everything's not really open <laughs> but 7-eleven is 24 <laughs> 7 so I got my first experience of a 7-eleven um so I went for uh tofu vinegared rice so it's like tofu wrapped around rice um this is what i want to recreate in the uk but i want to get a rice cooker first um it's egg fried rice but it has soy sauce run through it and it's so good it's so fucking tasty like i, I can't even tell you and one thing that shouldn't have worked but it really really worked is this it's like a cheese breaded bun or something um why is my mouth so funny? But it's got potato salad and mayonnaise. Oh, here's the sign from the toilet. <laughs> we'll go back to that in a minute. Um, it's got potato salad and mayonnaise mixed together. Because uh, in the UK, mayonnaise is put into the potato salad to make potato salad. But in Japan, they stan mayonnaise everywhere. Mayonnaise is like a superfood or some shit. And I love that because I love mayonnaise. Um, but they mix potato salad and mayonnaise put it in a cheese covered roll and it was like fucking heavenly to me i don't know what it was i had it like two or three more times i don't know i don't know but it tasted so fucking good <laughs> that i think when i go back there i will be living on this egg fried rice rice ball and this fucking potato salad mayonnaise creation it was so fucking good hey thad welcome in why well, my dutch and japanese get along so well mayonnaise bombing i rather don't shout out chunks i'm so sorry um but yeah and obviously so i tried to work out for the stream how long i had been traveling um i haven't opened the pokemon cards yet i thought i would leave it a little bit into the stream so i've not opened it yet um left uk left house uk at 10 p.m on the tuesday which would have been 10 p.m japanese time so there was a nine hour time difference got to japan 10 p.m on the wednesday so technically traveled 24 hours <laughs> it was and i slept maybe i think i slept like three times for like 20 minutes <laughs> i did not sleep in that time so i'm tired i'm dehydrated i'm still dealing with some stuff from home i'm hungry but i'm in japan i think i was delirious at this point so i tried to get on japanese time Hit up a 7 Eleven, went to sleep. And that was the travel to Japan. And we're not going to talk about the fact that I almost cried on stream telling you how emotional I got when I first saw Tokyo. Um, because it was emotional. <laughs> and this was the sign, the first message aside from I got here, I'm fine, to my friends group chat which is about how to not use a Japanese toilet. <laughs> By the way, Japanese toilets are the best invention and I miss them. <laughs> I miss them dearly. But yeah, don't stand on the Japanese toilet. Confuse me when I was delirious. Who is standing on the toilet seat here? Was what I put down there. <laughs> so 
So, oh, so many buttons. Gave myself a surprise while half asleep. <laughs> Tired Heidi had no fucking chill, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, that was a thing. What I did like about the public toilets, though, is they play music while you do your thing. And it meant that I felt like I was comfortable enough to use them. Um, there's that one again. Oh. <laughs> Please note, this is not my hotel. Lol, I realise I may have made a fucking mistake. Heaven sent. This is actually the background of my phone now. This picture of 7-Eleven is my lock screen. Because I'm in love with it. I love it. It just looks so Japanese to me. Um... So, day two. <laughs> Are you with me? I didn't sleep too good. My brain was fucked <laughs> with what was going on, where I was, and all the travel that I've been through. But, day two. So, day two was the Pokemon Center because it was like 10 minutes away from the hotel. Um, this was the Tokyo. DX one? They all have different names. But this is one in Nikonbashi. Um and this is where Did the cards come from here? No. They didn't. They came from the last store. I mean if we want to we can open the Pokemon cards now because we're talking about Pokemon. But they had all these murals where you got the lift to go in. Um and they're really cool, so you've got like the fire starters. So you have like the, I don't know how to describe like Pikachu EV like mascots. Um, you've got the water starters, the grass starters, and then some of them from, you know, the new one. <laughs> I have major regrets not using this Pokemon. And so I think when I go back to my playthrough, which is coming back very soon to the channel, I might go pick me up a Fido. <laughs> um, you had the very stereotypical picture of the Snorlax out the front, uh, which was next to the cafe. And then we had this mural of Pokemon throughout the years. I didn't want to say too many pictures, there's quite a few kids around. Um, and then obviously the new starters. Um, and all of the merch. The merch. I didn't actually get anything on this day, but you'll see him again soon. But I got Sleepy Pikachu. <laughs> I, there was a Sakura Pikachu in this store, but I wanted to wait for payday, which was the day before I came home, but it was gone. So I was glad I picked this one up the next day because this one is so fucking cute. There's a lot of, there's loads of different Pikachu um, plushies and they're all exclusive to each of the five stores, all of which we went to. But I'm really happy with my sleepy Pikachu. Um, so there's all the starters. I took so many pictures. Um, and then you had the mural, Miradon obviously all day long um and then you had this mural too which was really cool oh i have some video footage there's there's some there's some plushies for you um so if we pause at this point um if you want we can open some pokemon cards so do we do pikachu or do we do mimikyu oh which one do we do? We'll do the other ones when we get to the other Pokemon stuff. But yeah, which one should we do? Make a choice. Um, I don't mind which. Mimikyu. I was trying to work out. I have Mimikyu UK card. But I don't know if it's the same one. So I'm going to have a quick look. Ah, get the blinder out. Pikachu butt binder. Let's put music back on while we do this. Do 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 The beloveds. The beloved card card up. Um right. What number is Mimikyu? <laughs> I do not know. Uh so what a number order. Mimic you, gotta catch you. Mimic you, who? Oh, there he is. Is it the same card? No, they're different. They're different. They're very similar art, but different. Nice, 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 nice. Hello, buddy. Hey, Boosa. 
Hi, yeah. Do you want to come open cards with me? Yeah? You want to come open cards? Well, people may be able to hear you now because I'm using the other mic. Um, okay, here we go. I have resisted opening these since I got home because I knew I was going to do it on the stream. And it's killed me. It's fucking killed me to do that. Uh, oh, you have an Easter dinner? Ooh, I've got kebabs tonight for dinner. Um, veggie kebabs, obviously. Um, right. I can't open these motherfuckers. I'm not sealed with like. Ugh, this tape's like so strong. There we go. Oh, we're in, we're in, we're in. So, if I just like. Pull it. So obviously that was the box. Um, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Booze, you want to come and rate it, darling? No? Okay. This is what it looks like. Um, we got sushi, but my stomach is doing a hula hoop. Same with smart. Ooh, I love sushi. I think there is a sushi portion of this stream. <laughs> I believe. So I have, obviously on the top. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, there's bags. Oh, there's a Pokemon um, thing, card, game, map, damage counters. Uh, I'm guessing that's the exclusive card. Uh, but yeah, we'll open that in a second. Um, there's so much compared to Japan. Oh my god, I know. Shit, the cards are escaped. Cards are escaping. Oh, so they're not in. Um, I thought they'd be in like booster packs. They're not. And the backs are different, which is cool. Peaky man, gotta get you. So I can't do the little trick because they're not in booster packs, which is fine. It's all different. So obviously we have the backs are actually really cool. We obviously have. Waxy's final form? I'm not like savvy with the new Pokemon. Scarlet Pokedex. Because I didn't go this route. I didn't go Waterboy. Uh, Pokedex. 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 I had so true. The carriage will pull us through. Teach me and I'll teach you. So it's quack 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 <laughs> There you go. If I hold it on my face, you'll be able to see it. The very flamboyant water Pokemon. Beautiful. And then Mimikyu. The reason to get the box. Look how shiny, please. Um, the artwork of the UK one is very similar, but it, you can tell it's different. Mimic you. The top five Pokemon. Okay, let's break open these cards. The top one is Quaxley. You are only allowed to buy one per customer, which is exciting in itself. Um, from these came from as the Pokemon Center. So, oh my god, there's quite. I might split these in half because there's quite a lot to hold up. So we have. I guess they all spoke English. Yes, for the most part, yes. In the stores, yes. Quaxley. Oh, in uh, Quaxwell. Quaxwell. Oh, and another Quaxley. <laughs> we got duplicate. <laughs> but this isn't shiny. We have a duplicate. Wait, we have another Quaxley? <laughs> another Quaxwell. <laughs> I mean, I used to think these are all the same Pokemon, but I'm okay with it. Um, and another Quaxley. 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 Um. Oh, what are you? What are you? I I've caught you. 
I've caught well, to be fair, I've caught all of them. But I've caught you. What are you? What are you? If you guys know, shout out. It's a little disc fish Pokemans. Love fish. Might be. I'm just scrolling through the Pokedex. To see if I can find out. Ala. Ala Mola. Well, now I have to find out. My Pokedex is struggling. <laughs> uh, where are you? I've caught you recently on the game. Who are you? Heidi clearly knows her Pokemon. It's not Love Disc confirmed because it's not Finneon. Oh, it is. It's Allo. It's Allo Amola. Yes. Okay, this is gonna be a long stream. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, it might be a deck, but whatever. It's. Oh, it's Dende. 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 Knock off Pikachu. You know the one. Um, oh, fuck me, I caught you as well. Uh, what the fuck are you? You're a psychic type, right? Oh, uh, what are you? Nani? Uh, can't remember seeing that one. I remember it. Is that, no, Denende doesn't evolve. Um, it's just a little rodent entity on its own. Shit. My cards everywhere. No. It's a psychic Pokemon. I definitely remember it being psychic. So I weighed up the pros and cons of having it on my team. Um. <laughs> Heidi knows everything about Pokemon. Whoops. Uh, yeah, because next half of Denende in the Pokedex is Parishu. I just scrolled past. What are you? That's what Heidi asks. Uh, I'm going to just Google. Pink psychic. Pink and yellow psychic Pokemon? Yellow. Pokemon. Oh, it's natural search. You're not on any of these. Oh. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> uh, I feel like it's. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's got its number on it. For fuck's sake. It's 955. Flittle. It's called Flittle. And it's psychic. Flittle, the psychic Pokemon. <laughs> uh, Zangoose? I want to say it's Zangoose. Lechonk? I know that one. Oh, it's the um, Slizer. The one that um, Miradon is the future version of. Um, oh, energy. Looks like that's an energy grab card. I'll have to Google what that is. <laughs> um, looks like it's something to do with fire energy. Uh, the ban hammer, the ban hammer from this channel. Two ban hammers. A ball. Oh my god, they're all coming on the floor. God damn. Um, two of them. Three of them. <laughs> An ultra ball. 
Another ultra ball. Another ultra ball. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know again. Uh, oh, that looks like a trade. Or something. More trading. Um, Team Rocket's rocking. <laughs> and a fighting headband. Two of them. Right, we have the other half to go, so just bear with. At least we know that the fucking numbers are on there. <laughs> um, we have what looks like a referee. Oh, fuck. Fuckity fuck. We have a little annoying kid. Little annoying kid. Little annoying kid. Oh, we have rival. We have our rival from the game. The rival. We have some more of her. Some more of rival. We have four rivals. She's even more annoying in the freaking card format. Uh, we have the hot professor. The female one. Hot professor. Hot professor. And then we have our energies. Which are psychic and water. Like this. Um, if at how much were these? Um, we translated it when we're in the store. I feel like Spooky said they're about fourteen pounds English, which is pretty good for Pokemon cards. Um, yeah, but you're only allowed one per customer, so that's probably why. Um, duplicates cards. I'm not sure what I'll do with them. I may see about doing a channel point redemption for duplicates, but I'll have to think about it. Right, and we have the Quaxi mystery card. So in the other half we have, we have a Quaxi mystery card. Lots of Japanese. So much Japanese. Oh, I think it's explaining how the cards work. Um, one day I'll learn Japanese just to know what they're saying. It is on the list to learn Japanese uh, properly. And we have this little booklet. Oh, this explains how the game works. <laughs> the trading card game, that is not anything else. You know what, I am a fucking boss of the Pokemon trading card game. I was unbeaten in my run as a child, unbeaten. There's the car uh, the the coin. It's upside down. Um then we have damage counters. Yes, so we have burn and poison. So that's pretty cool. I've been practicing well, I'm unbeaten, so I got nothing to prove. There's the Dad, I can teach you the ways so you can beat chunks and anyone else that's been giving you a hard time. Oh, it's ripped! No! I just ripped it. Oh, fuck me. Okay, it's not too bad. It's not a big tear. It's not a big tear. We have the how to play. Um, we'll fold that back up in a minute. Or I'll make someone else do it for me. Uh, where's the Quaxi mystery card? The Quaxi mystery card. Inside the Quaxi mystery card, which is sealed with some pretty hefty foil. By the way, it's 55 minutes into stream. We've only made it to the first day, by the way. <laughs> I can talk for England. <gasps> oh, it's a shiny! It's big la chunk. <laughs> it's mummy la chunk. So those were the cards from the first pack. 
we will open one of the mystery cards from the store and then when we get to more pokemon stories i will um i'll open the other one <gasps> she's aggressive so i think it's a pokemon card but i'm not sure it's upside down oh it's the professor from pokemon go <laughs> He's got a code on him. Shouldn't show that code. I'm wondering if that's from uh, for Pokemon Go. Where's the professor? <laughs> that's cool. There was a massive statue of him. There was a Pokemon Go center where you could go and play Pokemon Go in Shibuya. And they then when we went to Sunshine City, they had a place where you could go and sit and throw down Pokemon cards with people in real life. It was so wholesome. It was so, so wholesome. But yeah, no, I've hidden that. I don't play Pokemon Go anymore, but... Apparently that's the quote. <laughs> um, so that's the first lot of Pokemon cards. That was the Quaxi edition. So back to the footage of what we did. So, after going to... Um, uh, where did I go? After going to Pokemans in Nikonbashi, went to the Imperial Palace, which was shut. <laughs> but it was a great walk. It was really warm on this day. Um, and still got to see some sights. It was really cool. Let's just close that I couldn't, I didn't know which Pokemon was which. There we go. Um, got to see Tokyo. It was, it was like, all the modern buildings and then with the old Tokyo mixed in, it was really nice. There's me at the, uh, the Imperial Palace. Let's just skip through that one. <laughs> this actually made it onto the Instagram of the Imperial Palace Gardens. Um, it's You can just see it's like the old mixed with the new. It's really cool. And then found a park to sit down and cry because my feet hurt. <laughs> um, my feet now hurt a lot. Lol. <laughs> Um, and then went for a nap, which lasted a very long time, <laughs> as you can imagine, body's been through a lot at this point. Um, so it was a bit of a logistical nightmare to eat, um, in Japan, as you can probably imagine being plant-based, um, because it's not really a thing out there. They do have vegan and vegetarian restaurants, don't get me wrong, but they're not very common where we were staying. Hello! So 7-Eleven, at first, was like a friend. Um, so on this night I had red bean paste buns, which bean paste is so good. So fucking good. And then I had this um, spaghetti. <laughs> I know I had spaghetti, I'm sorry. <laughs> um which was like pesto and almonds and basil and there was this herb on it which i'd never heard of before but it was super fucking tasty um and then i got some sushi um thinking yeah hey sushi but it had crab in it so luckily i smelt it before i ate it and i knew it was crab because i have an allergy but this was actually a really nice meal um and that again was 7-eleven um and that was day two i did have a video for day two but I think I've pretty much shown. Yeah, because I think they were pretty samey. <laughs> this fucking video. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's all the same. Right. So, day two was. So, I started making these in the hotel room with my AirPods. But every day I was getting tighter and tighter, so I stopped making them. I will finish them. I will upload all of the days to uh, TikTok. That is a goal that I have for this week. So the collection will be complete. So day two, slept till half two. There's the reflection of me taking a selfie. Um, and I was like, oh, fuck, the whole day has gone. <laughs> but I did have a headache since landed. And it was gone, so I think I needed the sleep. Um, and I felt like I had someone pinching like my eyes, 
um, and that had gone too. So I was like, oh fuck, gotta go get something to eat, not eating anything. Um, went to 7 Eleven. I got an egg sandwich. Egg sandwiches were my friends. Egg sandwiches were safe. Um, and so I had an egg sandwich. I think this is why I'm now so into eggs, is because I like them again. Because of Japan. And so I went to a park, it was actually a kids' park. Um, and ate my egg sandwich and drank my uh, fruit juice. Met some pigeons, because, you know, it was like being back home. <laughs> um, made some friends. Made some friends with the pigeons. Um, oh, and this is where I started to encounter vending machines more and more. Like I said when I was playing... No, no, no. No, no, no. I am the leader of this, cap of this boat. I'm the captain. Um, I said this when I was playing the convenience store the other day. They were everywhere. And they were super fucking helpful and they were good. You can see this one's hot, so you can get coffee and tea. Literally, the temperature of the sun. <laughs> anywhere. So if it's a cold day, you can just get one anywhere. It's great. How does a Pokemon Go Center work? Sorry, I missed that comment. Um, I don't know. I didn't really go in there because I'm not really into Pokemon Go anymore. Which is weird because I went to Tokyo. And it just had a statue of the professor, a statue of like the main featured Pokemon. And people were just, I don't know if there was like special Pokemon in that center and that's why people were there, but people were just chowing down. They loved it. Um, that's amazing. I still want to go, this needs to be a thing worldwide. It is super, super good. Like, and they're not expensive either. Like food and drink in Japan weren't, was not that expensive compared to the UK, which is extortionate at the moment. Like, the UK is so bad. Um, so yeah, uh, saw these everywhere. They were so fucking good. Um, and they take card. They take card as well. They take all kinds of payment. It's, like, it's just so good. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering what functions since it's a walking game. I don't know. I didn't play. Maybe I'll play when I go back. It just wants Pokemon Go something. Pokemon Boosters released over here. Oh. Um, so I thought this was a Sakura Bloom. It was not, but it was pretty. Pita, so, pita. My alerts aren't working. Uh, thank you for the follow. Um, my little Pikachu didn't jump up and down. Oh. But normally a Pikachu would jump up and down. Um, so... Where was my trailer for? Where were we going? Oh, we wanted to find a shopping centre. I remember. But the shopping centre we found where this was wasn't what we were expecting. Um, so we were like, oh fuck this, a little bit intimidated, let's leave. So we noticed we were near the Pokemon Centre in Tokyo Station, which is the Pokemon Centre that Sleepy Pikachu came from. However, we were not prepared for what we were about to walk into. It was anime and geek heaven. Like, I cannot describe to you how great this street is. This is Character Street in Tokyo Station. Pika, pika. Oh, thank you for the raid, based. Welcome in. Why are my alerts not working? Welcome in. Thank you for the raid. How are you doing? Why is it? Wait, I miss your face. My face is right here. Why am I sound? Why? Why is my Pikachu not working? <laughs> oh, but welcome in. Thank you for coming in. You're playing League. How's League these days? I had to quit due to saltiness. <laughs> I really do want to get back into League, but like, it intimidates me. <laughs> Toxic as ever. Love you too. Welcome in. Um, thank you for doing a shout out, Chunks. I have, I went to just play bots for a bit because it was just so fucking salty. And I played TFT, but I feel like TFT is getting too complicated for me to get my head around. So I was like, do you know what? I'm going to take a little career break and I haven't gone back. <laughs> but welcome in everyone. We're talking all things Japan. I went to Japan a couple of weeks ago, so we're talking all things Japan. So if you like Japan, you're in the right place. Um, so this is Character Street in Tokyo. It is Weeb Central. Every major franchise had a store there. So we're talking... One Piece had like the jump shop, which had that Dragon Ball, Naruto, all of them. Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen, can't say it. 
Um, there was a Sailor Moon store. There was a Totoro store. There was um, Card Captor. They had Sanrio. They had um, Kirby. They had everything. And it was just the first time in Tokyo that I'd seen anything anime. I know it was my first day. It was the first time I saw anything anime aside from the Pokemon store. And I felt so at home um have to remember gonna watch the rest of the vlog later on thank you so much for fun it's okay go enjoy your easter um but it was so i felt like i was home like i loved it um i didn't want to say too many pictures at this point because it is a train station but there was the disney store um obviously this is what i just said about the jump shop so you can see that you've got a giant goku <laughs> um you can buy ties you could buy dragon ball ties like <laughs> What is life and this was the pokemon store that i mentioned that sleepy pikachu came from and it was so cool this was store two out of five um and then got my first they're spooky <laughs> i got my first um i know i get them in some of these pictures we encountered our first gacha store now gachas is something i'd always been interested in because i was told that they were fucking crazy and you could get anything and when i say you can get anything. You can get anything in a gacha. You can get cereal, like little cereal boxes and little spoons and Darity Dunkers and stuff like that. It was crazy. And I was really intimidated. Like, what am I going to pick for my first gacha? Like, honestly, what am I going to pick? There's everything. <laughs> this whole building was just covered in gachas. Um, and I wanted to get something cool. So I decided to get me a Kirby, because <laughs> I love Kirby. Oh no, is that all I took of Kirby? Anyway, walk back and it was night time. And this is when I felt like I was again in Tokyo because everything was ev was everything I'd seen before. Oh shit. Okay, so I think I took more pictures of Kirby. If I haven't, I will just show you Kirby. I have Kirby on my desk. Um, but after going to the station, seeing all the anime stuff, um, went to this vegan burger place that was the top rated in Tokyo for vegan food. Um, and I had this vegan burger and this is where my love of avocado has come back. I've realized I've been eating avocados all week. Love avocados. Um, so it was a vegan patty with avocado. Obviously you can see it was there. It's cauliflower and everything. And the guy was so nice. He came over and he said, are you vegetarian? Or are you just ordering the burger? And I was like, I am, yeah. And he was like, okay. And apparently he took extra care to make sure that it didn't come into contact with meat, which I thought was super nice. Um, oh, here we go. This is the reveal. <laughs> so I went back to the hotel room after that. And Sleepy Pikachu. <laughs> I was so happy with Sleepy Pikachu. Um, look at his little face. Look at it. <laughs> And this is Kirby being born. Kirby now sits on my desk. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that Kirby now sits on my desk because he smiles and he matches my um, toast lamp that smiles as well. Everything at my desk smiles at me now, which could be really creepy or could be really weird. Now there was loads of different Kirby's you could have got. I would have liked the Kirby with the star, but this one is pretty cool. I like this Kirby. This Kirby is cute. <laughs> And he's proper like, he's got beans in him and he's, he was really cheap. He was 500 yen. He's got beans in him, he's properly stitched and everything. I was like really impressed with the quality of it. Um, so this was the birth of Kirby. That's you being born. That's you being born. <laughs> um, so this was the next day, up at 6 a.m. Up at 6 a.m. This was unheard of <laughs> in Japan. Um, so, like, I'm talking about when I abandoned you. I'm sorry. Cat's not happy. Um, so the hotel's opposite Shell Station. And I had what I thought, okay, so we need to talk about food, okay? I thought this was vegetarian. It was not. <laughs> but it has led to a bigger discussion and a bigger decision in my life that, to be fair, I do need to make. Um, so it was a raw egg. Uh, we had some pickled 
cabbage, I want to say, a salad, rice, and then um, some soup with uh, tofu in it. The soup, I thought, was veggie. It was not. It contained fish, um, which I found after by Googling the menu. And then we had some seaweed water, which was actually strangely nice. Um, now, I realised this afterwards when I started to feel a bit sick that this had fish in it. Um, however... I have realised, because my bigger ambition is to spend more time in Japan in a permanent way, that I do need to adjust my diet because, you know, otherwise it's going to be very difficult for me to live over there. <laughs> Obviously when I make food, that's fine. I can make whatever I need, but if I wanted to eat out, it would be very difficult. Um, so bear in mind I have a shellfish allergy. Um, my plan over the next year is to reintroduce fish into my diet not pork or beef or anything like that it's to go pescatarian um and just have fish occasionally um i am majorly plant-based but i have start to started to incorporate egg into my breakfast and stuff yes that's right i'm gonna eat your fish <laughs> You went, Arr! but it's not gonna be an easy process because I've been vegetarian for about 10 years, so I will only, I'll eat fish every now and again. It won't be like a staple, but I will allow myself to have fish because the, the shame I felt within myself for accidentally eating fish, I don't know why I felt it. Like, I honestly don't. Like, it was literally just in the broth. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and go pescatarian, um, but it's going to be a slow process um, for when I go back. Um because mentally, I don't want to eat meat, but like I know I'm gonna need to. Um, but it's I'm at the moment I'm still plant based, um, but it's gonna take a while to get me to stop feeling shame. Anyway, that was the breakfast, um, and it was in this cute little ramen shop that the hotel sponsored to give us breakfast. It's all included. Um, lunch. <laughs> so it pissed down on this day so much that it was like <laughs> I'm gonna wait for the rain to stop. So this is my lunch. Egg sandwich. This is the egg sandwich that I've mentioned a couple of times now. That is a lifesaver. Um, I'm watching Pam and Tommy here, which I finished in Japan, which was actually a decent watch. Um, and then I had maybe the cinnamon buns. Um, and some potato chips. Oh, and this was the day we found the Sakura Bloom. So this is Sakura Bloom. Um, went back a couple of days later and all of these uh, blossoms have fallen off. Like, it was insane. It went as quickly as it came. Um, but these were the first sakura blossoms I saw in Japan. And I loved them. I thought they were really cool. But yeah, as you can see, it's pissing it down on this day. So it's a bit like, oh shit, what do you do? Um, we are walking down the street, saw some automated ramen. It is going without me. But yeah, it's raining. I'll let it run. It's raining. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so spooky pointed out to, pointed out to me that this looks like a shocked face and every time i came across something on a bridge that looked like this i thought it genuinely does look like a shocked face <laughs> the two little eyes in the mouth if you can't see <laughs> um so after that went to starbucks and got the first gift to come back with which was a it looked like a hand painted mug from starbucks the where we are in the world collection but it was um sakura from uh like a sakura painted a thing and apparently they only come back once every year so she got that which i thought was really cool um so this just took some street shots oh this is shrine day where's the shrine there should be some pictures of a shrine here Unless I didn't put them on Instagram. I went to several shrines. Oh, this was an emotional day for me. I remember now. Right, so. On TikTok, there will be footage of me going around shrines. I This is probably the last day I uploaded. Um, so if you want to go check it out, you can. I wanted to do... I remember now. I wanted to do something on that day where we'd done something, but it was raining. So we hadn't got sick, but we'd done something. So we went around a couple of the shrines. I went to this shrine, I remember I took a picture of it backwards, this is the back of it, because I didn't want to take too many pictures and be disrespectful. Um, at this shrine, there was red roses growing, here's the actual shrine, there was red roses growing, and I had an experience 
Um, so red roses are my granddad's favourite flower. And this was a shrine to honour your ancestors. Um, and I had a moment where I said goodbye to my granddad that passed in February because at the funeral it was very busy and I got to say goodbye to his coffin but at the time I comforted my cousin who absolutely lost it when she saw him and I lost it but I felt like I had to be responsible for her and I, I comforted her and I didn't say everything that I wanted to say to him so at this shrine in my head I said goodbye to my granddad and I thought the red roses were a sign that I should do it here um, so I said goodbye to my granddad and it was like a really emotional experience and um, it was lovely too I didn't leave anything behind because I didn't want to be disrespectful but I said goodbye to my granddad um, so I did that and then got the Starbucks so I think my Instagram is slightly out of order but <laughs> what can you do <laughs> Um, this was another one of the shrines that had a bell. Didn't ring the bell because I didn't think you should. Um, but there was a bell there to ring. <laughs> um, got back to the hotel room and um, watched some anime, um, which was about a lost cat. <laughs> I'm trying. I was trying to understand what was going on because there was no English subtitles in the hotel, obviously, because um, it's a business hotel. Um, but there was a little lost cat and I was trying to follow along with like what little Japanese I know. <laughs> um... <laughs> I would like to report I feel like I've gotten used to the futuristic toilets of Japan and they no longer terrify me. No further comments at this time. I had mastered the spray in the toilet and the heated toilet seat. I had mastered the use of the bidet <laughs> and I wanted to brag about it but I didn't want to put Sprayed myself in the ass. <laughs> but I wanted to outwardly brag that I was okay with it. <laughs> because I had told my friends on day one that I was scared by the toilets at the airport. <laughs> Past Heidi cracks me up. <laughs> and then I decide this is the next day. <laughs> um, this was the next day and I decided I wanted to finish Pokemon um, Violet because I'd put it off um, while I wasn't feeling great. I wanted to appreciate the game so I put it off. Um, so I finished it the next morning. I couldn't sleep that night for some reason. So I finished it and I became champion. <laughs> And it's sunny again. <laughs> this was the next day. This must be day four now. Um, oh, is this McDonald's day? I think this is McDonald's day. Um, so went for a walk down the street, saw some local stuff. This was McDonald's day. So we hadn't woken up, aside from the day before, really in time for breakfast. And I didn't want to go back to the ramen place because of the fish incident. I don't think I told Spooky at this point that I felt sick and I knew I'd had fish. I think I told him after this point because I kept saying, I want to get a McDonald's because I knew McDonald's was safe because I Googled it. And I, at the mo at that point, my body was feeling not so great, um, which is probably where the toilet thing came from. <laughs> and I was like, I want to get a big breakfast. They have big breakfast in Japan. I want to have big breakfast. So I went and got a big breakfast, which is something that got discontinued in the UK a long time ago. And it consisted of egg, hash brown, pancakes, and a muffin. There was a sausage in there, but I gave it to Spooky um, to eat on my behalf. Um, and it was great. We, we ate in this kid's uh, playground and this woman just stared at him, like just stared him out. It was amazing. But this was the day I found out in Japan People don't wear sunglasses, only tourists, because it makes they feel like it makes them stand out. So there's me walking down the street in my sunglasses and people were staring at me and I couldn't figure out why. And I know that some people had stared at my hair because people had gestured to it and gone like that, or they had gestured that they liked the colour because I imagine they thought I dyed it for the Sakura Festival because it's pink. Um, 
But yeah, don't wear sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this is the day of the walk. So we went for a big old walk. Found a body of water. Crossed the body of water. It was really chill and really warm. Oh, it's Sky Tree Tower Day. So went to Sky Tree Tower on this day, which is the tallest tower in Tokyo. And it was amazing. So to get there, went through this little traditionally feeling park. Went and sat there for a while. Saw some turtles. Got to see some turtles. They're like there. I don't know if you've seen them. See some turtles sunning themselves. And saw some koi. And it was really chill. Um, it was literally in the middle of everything. Of all these like modern buildings. But there was just like this place where you could just slow down and relax. And it was really nice. And saw another shrine. And here is how tall this fucking beast is. Right? So you can pay to go to this observation deck. And you can pay extra to go to this observation deck. We paid to go to this observation deck. <laughs> I don't think I could have hacked this. I spoke to Holly afterwards who's been to that. And she said it made her feel wobbly when she was up there. And I'm like, I'm gonna stick to this observation deck. <laughs> and inside this giant tower is, you guessed it, another weeb station. <laughs> there was more anime stuff. It's Agretzko, obviously one of my favourite animes. Um, and then this is where we met Luffy. I sent this to Adric. I met Luffy. Are you jelly? I know you are. Because <laughs> I'm watching One Piece at the moment. Um, and of course, there was another Pokemon Centre. There was Pikachu riding Rayquaza. Yeah. Anyway, that's number three out of five. So I went to this Pokemon Center too and took some more pictures of Pokemon because it became a kind of hobby to go and find all of these. <laughs> um, and uh, we just vibed. This one was very busy because obviously it's in this uh, it's in this very busy shopping center. Um, about to climb this bad boy. If you don't like her, don't like her, swear the coin picture. Literally, that was me standing up like that. Look how tall it is. Look at it. <laughs> so we climbed to the 350th floor. I might, it did it in 90 seconds. These 350 floors in a um, elevator. I might, I, I shit you not, my ears popped as if I was on an aeroplane. But it was really cool. Um, and this is Tokyo from that observation deck. And it it was slightly um, pushed forward, the window, so you could kind of lean over. And I did that and it made my legs go to jelly. <laughs> like I was like, oh my God, I'm so high up. I don't have a problem with heights, but it got me. <laughs> and this is obviously a little bit more looking down at Tokyo. It doesn't look real. It looks like a model village. Like it's, it doesn't look real from up there. Um, so just some more aerial ambient shots. If you want to go back and look at these, they are on my Instagram. So you can have a little bit of a deeper look. And there's me <laughs> with my mask on. Obviously wearing masks everywhere, indoors, um, as everyone in Japan was. So we just followed the, the crowd, wore it in Obviously the train station, shopping centres, shops, tourist attractions. Everyone is still wearing masks out there. Even though mask mandate's gone, everyone is still wearing them. Uh, that's me pointing out, I don't know. <laughs> There's me in Tokyo. Um, and then they were promoting a new anime up there. Or a film, I think it was actually. And then we... That's my Netherlands one. Okay, that, that one's come to an end. I had to split all my stuff between Instagram stories. Uh, okay. So this is in the Sky Tree Tower. You can make a wish at the top because it's meant to be, they said, one of the most spiritual places in Tokyo because of how high up it is. So you can make a wish and the spirits will hear you. So <laughs> I am quite, uh, I'm open to these things, um, especially in other countries. I'm very open to manifesting and putting what I want out there um and if the spirits want to help me fantastic <laughs> so I had a white ribbon you have to get it from a gacha and then write on it and then tie it to the thing 
So I put, see you next year, Japan, which is already manifested. Um, one day I'll live here with Ted and Boots, and then she, the little paw prints. That was my wish, is to go back next year, which Pita, Pita. Like it's happening. Oh, hey, welcome in. Thank you for the raid. Welcome in. How was your stream? What were you playing? Um, welcome to my Japan stream, where I talk about Japan endlessly. <laughs> Oh, you're playing Pokemon? You are in the right place. We are talking about Pokemon. <laughs> um, if in a fusion, I know that one. That's the one with the cursed Pokemon, isn't it? Where they're like fused and you have to catch them. Because I think it was Adric that sent me some really fucked up fusions. And um, he was like, ha 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 ha, like haunting me with these, these fusions. And I was like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was fan made oh it's fan made that's cool but yeah we're talking about pokemon in the stream um i've opened some japanese pokemon cards i still have a pack to go um and i was talking about all the different pokemon places i visited so there's my mimikyu oh i can't really see it but there's my mimikyu um and my sleepy pikachu <laughs> uh, but yeah welcome in everybody and thank you for the raid um we're just on sky tree tower which is the tallest tower in Tokyo at the moment. Um, so yeah, that was my wish. Manifesting, going back next year, which will be happening, and maybe one day living in Japan. It's with the spirits. It's with the spirits. <laughs> um, oh yeah, this was me. Oh yeah, one of my special sites in Tokyo, so I'm manifesting. <laughs> and this was this is a, a, a picture that really stuck with me. This is the shadow of the tower over Tokyo. Look at it compared to the city. That's how hench this thing is. It. I'm so glad I got this picture. Like, honestly, I think it's incredible. <laughs> um, seriously, if you don't like heights, ignore the next bit. It's a glass floor and it made me jello legs. <laughs> so yeah, there's a glass floor where you can walk over and see Tokyo. If you don't like it, just look away for like two seconds. Um, I'll tell you when to look back. So I'm going to click it now. Yeah, that, <laughs> that shit me up when it was happening. <laughs> Spit honourable mention to Spooky's foot. <laughs> Why I chose to wear boots and jeans on this hot day, I do not know. This is the day my feet got fucked. And they're still fucked from the blisters. <laughs> and then I thought I'd just label it Tokyo for you all. So you know that that's Tokyo. <laughs> Um, and there's me walking on it and Spooky attempting to mess with me. <laughs> um, so went to that tower, climbed down the tower, went back to the local um, train station and we used the public transport for the first time. Now, the I cannot stress to you how efficient Japanese public transport is. They're like every five minutes and if they're late like it doesn't well basically they're never late but if they're late they have to give you money back or something but they were never late the whole time we were there um it was so easy once you knew what you were doing to catch the un well what would be the equivalent of the underground to the uk um which is what we mainly use because there was a station on our street where the hotel was um but yeah <laughs> use public transport for the first time it was very cramped though it's the only downside is that it was very cramped. But you're going to Tokyo, so you know what you got to expect. Ah, yes, no wonder my feet hurt. 17,000 steps. <laughs> um, oh, was this Pete today? Okay, so I'm glad Chunks has left. Because I hate mushrooms. I make it known to everyone that I fucking hate mushrooms. They are the worst vegetable to exist, right? I have hated them since I was a child. Tokyo gives me mushroom pizza. I eat it. And ever since, I have liked mushrooms. I don't know what was in this fucking pizza. It's just sauce, cheese and mushrooms and some seasoning. But I'm cured of mushroom hatred. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Remember when I had that stream last year and I was eating mushrooms 
and crying on stream because I hated them so much. Tokyo's cured me. It's cured me of eggs as well. I don't know what it is. This piece was so fucking good as well. That slice is probably the equivalent of about three UK slices. I don't know what it, I don't know what happened, but Chunks were like, heck. Because I was like, when I was out there, I'm like, I hate mushrooms. I will not eat mushrooms. <laughs> oh, and I had fries with it too. Yes. <laughs> and then just went for a walk. There was the Sky Tree Tower at night. You could see it from everywhere. And then there was a little Chinese shop too. And it's the next day. So on this day, or is it the day before, I woke, in, I woke up to a message from Holly Plays. You know the one off the Discord. At this point, she had been my little unofficial tour guide. But she sent me a message saying, go to this park and thank me later. And I was like, why? This park was actually a bit of a trek from the hotel. It was an hour of walking. But my feet weren't fucked enough. So I thought, let's go. <laughs> in hindsight, probably should have used the subway. <laughs> But got to see some cool sights, got to see a lot of shops on the way as well. But this park was beautiful. It was a full sakura in bloom. There was sakura trees all along this line. There was this little peaceful park. Because we'd entered the back of the park and nothing was there. And Spooky was like, I don't know what Holly's on about. I'm like, but Holly's never wrong. This is the annoying thing. Holly is never wrong. <laughs> and I was like... There's got to be something here. She wouldn't recommend it if it wasn't good. These sakura blooms. My favourite images I took. They were so... These pictures do not do it justice. They were so beautiful. And people flock to Japan for this. For these trees. And I can see why. They're just so beautiful. Um, that is not a sakura bloom. <laughs> But that was the first bit that I saw. I'm like, there are trees here. There are trees here. <laughs> and then just, they were so beautiful. I felt so peaceful when I saw these trees. Um, obviously, there was a lot of people taking pictures. So I couldn't take too many pictures because there were kids around. But so pretty. <laughs> oh, and this was the best drink. Honourable mention to this drink. I lived on it. It's fruit juice and i loved it i just had to put it in my instagram stories um but yeah it was like this literally all down this path and around here and behind was just the it was just rows of these trees like i implore anyone that wants to go to japan to try and go in march and see these trees they just they just hit different i don't know what it is they just hit so good um so this whole afternoon was just dedicated to these trees this is my favourite image, and I've used it, um, I've pinned it on Instagram, and it's the background of my phone. So my lock screen is 7-Eleven, and the back of it is this picture, because I made it to Japan. And this image means so much to me. I know it's such a basic image of, like, petals, and my converse, and my shitty leggings, but this image means so much because this is everything that we wanted. We wanted to see the sakura bloom. Wanted to go to Japan. And there's everything in an image. I don't know why I get so passionate and so upset when I talk. Well, not upset, but I get so emotional when I talk about Japan because this was everything. This this image is everything I wanted, and I got it. I achieved something major off my bucket list at the age of thirty-one, and here it is. It's this. This is what I was dreaming of in lockdown. Was the adventures I could take and the places I could go. There it is. This image. <laughs> um, sorry to get emotional. <laughs> I, it's just a goal. It's a life goal. Do you know what I mean? And there was all the sakura on the floor just there. Um, more trees. By the way, this is going to be like more trees. There's going to be a lot of trees. <laughs> Um, but it was, and thank you so much to Holly for recommending this on a whim. Uh, it, it was my, probably my favourite day was seeing this park. And it cost nothing. A lot of the stuff we did in Japan cost nothing. 
so we budgeted way above what we needed. Um, I took this picture because I thought it was crude. So obviously I've been to Sky Tree Tower and it kind of looked like there was a penis. <laughs> so my sense of humour returned. Um, I'm so proud of you, well done, I can't hope to see Japan someday. Well, I'm hoping to live out there. That's going to be the ultimate goal, but it just depends if all my ducks line into a row. Um, and these were the two days. Ouch, feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh and this is a picture the spooky took of me looking at the blooms i love this picture even though i hadn't washed my hair at that point i had my glasses on because my eyes hurt and i was tired i love this image literally just me admiring things um oh gotcha so on the walk we found another gotcha machine but these quick dinner nothing fancy my stomach is dead inside fair enough enjoy um where is he so we saw this gacha machine that was all these white cats and obviously teddy my cat is a white cat so i'm like i'm gonna get gacha i'm gonna get gacha of teddy he doesn't appreciate the fact that i have a gacha of him um so <laughs> it does sum up teddy <laughs> it's so funny it sums him up so much he's just pulling a face <laughs> but yeah that's one of the gashes we got was teddy just pulling a face <laughs> it really is my boy <laughs> um so we got on the train what did we go on the train to oh this is the next day this is shibuya so shibuya is another major like place to go and visit if you love well, fashion. It felt like fashion and anime. It was like, it felt like a mini London. So there's all these designer shops and I'm not fancy enough to go in any of them. <laughs> um, I just took pictures of random things that I mean, not amused me, that intrigued me. Oh, this is Godzilla Day! We went to go see Godzilla! I loved this day, even though my feet really hurt and I cried. I, I did cry a lot because of my feet. Um, so... We went to the Godzilla store before we saw Godzilla. Godzilla obviously being a major, major icon. And they have all these displays to do with Godzilla. And I've never seen Godzilla, but since I've been, I'm going to watch it. Um, and, oh, that's Godzilla. I bought the anime crossover that no one knew that they needed, but it happened. Hamtaro and Godzilla. <laughs> um... If you're familiar with Hamtaro, he was another one that I watched growing up. And he's in his little Godzilla costume. I was glad I got green because we went back to get some shirts. And the green one was all sold out, so I'm glad I got green. But it's little Hamtaro in a Godzilla outfit. <laughs> Which I thought was really cool. Um, so yeah, picked up a little Godzilla. Godzilla Hamtaro um so did that then went to go see the main man there's literally a life-size godzilla hanging off the edge of a cinema this is the first thing that i saw because the way that we walked to it was inside his mouth <laughs> um and he literally is just taking a bite out of puss in boots and there he is so up close he's pretty cool right but further away gets even cooler because he starts to light up and breathe fire or whatever it's called <laughs> um went to an arcade as well the arcade was cool i never been to a japanese arcade and within the first 30 seconds of trying on this machine i'd won two prizes i won corn <laughs> i won a little corn um I want a little corn. There's his face, which I thought was cool. And I also won this little ghost. I've never had this luck in an arcade before. Like, it was insane. Um, so it's a little ghost, and then you pull his little ghost costume off, and then it's a little person underneath. I don't want to pull it off because I want to break it, but it's a little creature hiding in a ghost costume. <laughs> But then after that, my luck went back to normal and I didn't win anything else. <laughs> um, and then we went for a walk around Shibuya. My feet were so painful at this point. 
Um, but this was Shibuya at night. A lot of people go there for the nightlife, it feels like. Um, and I just took this picture. There was an Ikea there, which blew my mind. <laughs> Um, and then we went to the fourth Pokemon Center and went to see Mewtwo. I wanted to find the one that had Mewtwo so bad and it turned out to be like the one I wasn't looking for. Mewtwo is huge. Like you can see my size compared to Mewtwo. He is huge. My poor feet. Um, and that's him bubbling away. And this is Godzilla breathing fire. <laughs> Which was cool. Um, and there's Godzilla and Hamtaro. Oh, we went to the Nintendo um, store. There's a Nintendo store in Shibuya where the Pokemon Center is. So we got to see some really cool Nintendo merch. And this is obviously Animal Crossing. And obviously there's Link from Zelda. Um, <laughs> ouch! <laughs> you could just see a timeline of why my feet hurt so bad. <laughs> Oh, and here's the little ghost. I think I may actually show him in this, so I don't need to show him now. Um, yeah, that's what he looks like. <laughs> um, and then there's the corn. It's corn! And then, is this the next day we went on a train? Oh, this is going to see the Gundam. We went to see the Gundam store. So there's a unicorn Gundam. You can see him there. That's how tall he is compared to the building. And I wanted to make sure we went to the Gundam the Unicorn Gundam, before we left, because I've seen a Gundam, why not? I'm not really into Gundams, but I was like, well, why not? Let's go see it. Everyone goes on about it, let's go see it. Um, and that is the big boy right there. That is the big boy. Um, it's a Diver City. I tagged, I tagged all these places, so I remember where I was going. Um, and that's the, that's him from behind. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a Gundam booty right there. <laughs> um, and then we went into the Gundam shop. Is it called Gundam? What's it called? Gundam base? The Gundam store, maybe. And we saw some Gundams. And I got my first one. <laughs> Which still isn't built. It's still in its uh, box. But this is the first one. Um, it's a little cat. <laughs> So like, oh, let's get a Gundam, it's a cat. But it's really cool. There's loads of different ones. And I knew this is the one that I had to have because it has arms and legs that ping out. It's not been built yet, but it has the little arms and legs that ping out. I was like, yeah, that's for me <laughs> right there. Um, Spooky loved it. Like we were there for like an hour maybe, just looking at Gundams, which was cool. Um. He actually got one too. Oh, they do a Hello Kitty and a Gundam crossover at the moment. He got a Gundam, which I've stolen from them. So uh, the box is quite a little bit bent in the airplane, but it's okay. Got this Gundam. Can you, I need to remember I have a stream deck, um, which I'm sure he'll post pictures when it's done. It looked cool in the in the case. When he was picking so that is the gundam that he got which i've just stolen focus from <laughs> oh and also for the unicorn gundam they had um little gachas exclusively for the unicorn um which looks like this he's quite he's quite fragile though but yeah he's really cool anyway after that there was a rumour there was a Statue of Liberty around Diver City, so we went and found it. Apparently, they built the Statue of Liberty to uh, celebrate Japan's relationship with France, not with America. <laughs> and there are three around Tokyo, so we found one. And I was joking with my friends in the group chat, like, this means I've been to New York, right? <laughs> but yeah, we found the Statue of Liberty in Tokyo. And then I took some shots, which I love of just Tokyo just these lovely shots of it just as the sun was setting and then we went to the Totoro store where is my Totoro? Totoro oh he's behind me 
Um, we've seen a couple of these Totoro stores um, around. Like, they were everywhere, these Ghibli stores. Um, and I was like, I'd like to get a Totoro. Um, because when I booked the trip, or when we booked the trip, I used a Totoro picture to announce the, the trip of a lifetime. I used Totoro to announce it. So to have a Totoro, it kind of felt like it was full circle. He lives in my living room. He's really soft. But it kind of felt like a full circle moment. And I was like, I need to celebrate this. I do. Um, and then there is the Gundam at night. So fucking cool. Um, just the sheer size of it. It's really cool. And there it was next. They have these rainbow stairs that lit up next to it, which just created this beautiful sight. And then the train. Where is the train going? Oh, so this was the day we went and picked up loads of um, merch because it was coming to an end. This was the day before we left. Went to the Evangelion store. And again, I need to watch this. I picked up so many things I need to watch while I was out there. And ended back at the Godzilla store. <laughs> um, and then we just went for a walk. And then I believe we went to the Pokemon store in San... Oh no, we went to see the other Godzilla statue first. There was another Godzilla statue that was on Google and it was this one, which looks more like I would imagine Godzilla to look like. And there was like all these warnings, like if you don't take your trash home, you get killed by Godzilla. <laughs> oh, I found a vegan burger place. It was really nice. Um, but we had a bit of an experience in here where... They brought the food over and started eating and my lips started to swell up and it went red. Now I don't know if it's because Spooky was eating shrimp next to me because obviously I have an allergy or if there's some cross contamination or something but my lip swelled and it took a long time to go down. It hurt as well. <laughs> um, I got on the train, saw these little funky characters everywhere. So a frog. I love frogs. <laughs> um, then we jumped on the train I went to Sunshine City, which is the other place the Pokemon cards come from. So we're going to open some Pokemon cards. And this is the bigger one. This is where I mentioned there was the Pokemon Go Center and the Pokemon uh, Card Center. So we just saw a load of different Pokemon. All these statues were just out front. They're really cool. Um, I'm just going to let it play through. Because um, we went to get presents for people. I ended up picking up Pokemon cards. <laughs> Um, there's Swablu and Pyduff, Pyduff, um, and then the Starsers, Trico gonna kill you from a height, <laughs> and the Starsers again, more Starsers, that was great to see all this Pokemon stuff out, and then Pikachu, I believe that's the end of that one. So I need to find my other... Oh shit. Oh shit. Because this one was the final one. Um, my final Instagram story is from Japan. Oh yeah, bought this little guy last night. Felt like a full circle moment. That's the thing that I announced in May last year. Anyway, there's Evie. <laughs> Miradon. It was so cool to see Miradon like this. It was huge. Miradon is my boy. Like, I loved it. Um, and here's some of the murals outside the Pokemon Center. You got your psychic. Oh no, your fairies, maybe. Fairy Pokemon. Fighting. This one I really liked. The ghost Pokemon. Um, and then the original boys. And the Eevees. And the dragons. And Pikachu again. <laughs> so we'll pause there for a sec to open the last set of Pokemon cards, which is the Pikachu deck. Um, hopefully, I can just Google the Pokemon. I don't know. And we've got one more um, exclusive thing. So after stream, you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm be putting Pokemon cards away. <laughs> that one was a lot easier to open. Um, shit. So, we have, like we did with the other one, we have the Pikachu exclusive card and the um, the thing for the, the, the battle map. 
so we'll open that last. But here we have Pikachu, Pulma, is it Pulmot? And the coin, the Pikachu coin. Um, how the f do I get into you? Oh, there we go. Oh god. Oh god, Pikachu, no. Pikachu, not like this. Pikachu, not like this. Um, that's here they are. Pika P. Puma. Put you over there. My little Pikachu coin. Can I see it? Oh god, the light for it isn't great. <laughs> Oh, there we go. If I do it just like that, you can kind of see Pikachu. Um, and then um, we have the cards, which I can totally open. Totally open. So if this is a deck, obviously we're going to see repetitions of the same cards. But I remember I had to walk so far on Pokemon Violet to make this dude evolve. <laughs> it was so Oh no, they're not, they're, okay. There we go. See the evolutions happening in front of you. Oh no, because obviously yes, there will be duplicates, okay. Big boy with big hands. I think Rival had one, did she not? I don't want to spoil the game if no one's played it, but. Magnemite, <laughs> my boy. <laughs> Voltorb. My other boy. Oh, a couple of Voltorbs. Three Voltorbs. Electrode. <laughs> oh. Oh. Sphinx? Is it Sphinx? 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 I'm going into Luxio. Oh, wait, if I hold it like that. I can't even see what you are on the camera. Oh, it's Pin... Pinkerkin? Another Lechonk. I have so many Lechonks. What am I going to do with them all? <laughs> um, and then we have trainer cards. Looks like to swap electric energy. A zappy zappy. <laughs> uh, another one of those balls. I don't know what to do with the duplicates. I might, I might make a redemption for them. A ball. Uh, I'm gonna have to Google what these are. Swap it. It's a machine. I don't know. <laughs> um, another ball swap. Another zappy thing. I will Google these and I'll, I'll find out what they are. The referee. It looks like they're the same as the other packs. To be fair. Another little kid. Another little kid. Little kid. Rival. I'm gonna have like five of my rival again. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's Daddy Professor. This is my professor right here. Because <laughs> I have Violet. And then the energy cards. So, we have the Pika P exclusive card. I'm having to speed up a little bit because I'm very aware that I need to be done very soon because I have something else going on this evening. But we will definitely get that and if anyone's if anyone's got any questions about anything um obviously always ping me on discord um and ask me you know uh, i don't mind talking about this stuff i love it and when the gundams are built i'll pop a picture up of them too <laughs> pika p exclusive card it's upside down Eels. Oh shit. <laughs> but I ripped it. Is. <gasps> it's Miradon! No way! <laughs> it's Miradon! <laughs> I fucking love Miradon! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, Miradon. Number 1008. That's how many Pokemon there are. <laughs> it's Miradon. I don't want to spoil Pokemon Violet, but I wept at the end of the game because of Miradon. <laughs> that, 
it's so fucking cool. I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with Mirrodon. <laughs> um, we now have the other store card. I'm kind of glad I waited so open these. I am. So I have footage of me opening them. Um, okay, so the other exclusive card is... Oh, it's a professor again with a code. If anybody wants these Pokemon Go card, Pokemon Go codes, just let me know, because I don't play. So that's cool. I like it. It must be for the Pokemon Go event that they had going on or something. So that's the cards done. And we're literally on the last day of Japan. So, we're getting there. We are good. <laughs> okay. So, it rained. Again. Where's my live scene? There we go. Um... This is me just taking some shots of the last night just so I can remember Tokyo as it was for me. Going home for a rest. Look at this fucking walking. <laughs> last day in Japan as we begin a long journey home at 7 pm Japan time. 10 days is a long time away from the cats and home life, especially in a completely different time zone. It was a fantastic time to reset to reset and reevaluate. I'm not sad it's over, as it's more, I'll see you very soon, Japan. Watch this space. I feel as lot. I feel as though a lot needs to change personally when I return. I was in a bad place when I came out here. I lost a lot of family in a short space of time. And for four years, I felt like I was holding my breath. Time to take it back. I'll be streaming and content creating, though, just with a different mindset. <laughs> so, yeah, I stand by everything I wrote there. A lot of things have already changed since I've been home. Um, I've been focusing a lot more on literally me, um, what I've been eating, keeping myself hydrated, although I feel dehydrated today because I had a nap just before stream and I am dehydrated. Um, going out walking more, playing games without feeling like I have to be a certain way. I'm trying to, I'm trying to preserve like my energy, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to preserve my own um, personal energy um, because going through a four years of just waiting for bad news it does a number on you and i don't just mean lockdown uh, just like personally with family and it was yeah i'm a lot less online now like on discord i'm not just sitting there watching the discord anymore i'm not i'm trying to make connections in real life like offline sorry like where i'm hanging out with my friends or going out to the park to enjoy the sun like today or I just think I gave too much of myself online and it bit me in the ass a little bit um and I've been sad for the first part of the year and I just I need to take something back for me you know I'm also working on restyling myself like with clothes and stuff and that's been quite fun anyway the last day this last day includes the travel home by the way this is how long it took so we went to tokyo tower on the last day we uh checked out of the hotel at 10 a.m and our flight wasn't until 10 p.m i feel like because we left the hotel at like seven um so we went to tokyo tower which is one of the most famous landmarks in tokyo um <laughs> me in a few months just kidding <laughs> i have lost a shit ton of weight since i went to japan like that is something that stuck with me and i'm proud um it's also the tower of love apparently as you can see i traveled home in the same jumper that i'm wearing <laughs> um so yeah there was this whole theme of love in this place um and this is us going up tokyo tower you got to see it. You got to see Tokyo. Um, and then there was like um, this smell. I don't know what it was, but it, it smelled incredible. And then here's Tokyo again. And it, it felt like the perfect way to say goodbye or see you later. Just, and there's Sky Tree Tower in comparison. <laughs> um, and there was a shrine built into it to keep people that had visited it safe. And I felt like I needed that for the journey home. Oh, my headset's gone. Oh. Um, and if you go to the main deck, you get some free lemon fizz. And it's really nice. Um, that was me at the top. <laughs> Lol. 
This is my travelling home outfit. It was a jumper, a vest top, and some leggings. And I felt really comfy. Um, it's me again with Tokyo. Um, they had this weird geometric thing going on, which I really liked. Um, oh my god, this robot! So, there was this robot that said goodbye to you, and it sang. It was so funny. It said, maybe I could do with a day off, maybe visit a hot spring. <laughs> and it sang to everyone that it loved them on the way out, which I thought was really nice. <laughs> I love this robot. It made me laugh so much. Um, and then went for a walk, went to see, this is on the bottom of the tower, which I thought was nice. So we just basically had a load of time to kill, had this apple and cinnamon crepe, I remember it, it was so good. Um, and obviously nowhere to stay and rest, so we just kept walking. Um, went to this local park, saw some more blossoms, went to a temple, which was right next to the tower. Um, pretty if I touch grass. <laughs> People accuse me of not touching grass, and you know what? They were absolutely right. I don't touch grass. Um, and then we went back on the train um, and went back to the hotel. Sayonara and thank you for this day. Um, and this was us saying goodbye to the hotel. The hotel's actually here, and that was a picture I took on the first night. Part one about to begin. So, there was a big commotion on the way home. Um, our transfer was stuck in traffic, so we didn't think we were going to make it back to the airport in time. So the hotel actually stepped in, and I'll be forever grateful, and said, jump in this taxi. It's, we've sorted it. Um, so we jumped in this taxi, went to the airport. It was showing, like, a howling amount of yen for the journey. We were like, look, if we've got to pay for it, we've got to pay for it. We need to get home. But it was waived, and we were so fucking grateful. Um... And the transfer company were there at the airport to say, we're really sorry, the guy got stuck in traffic. And it's like, it happens. We're here. We're going home. Um, made it through uh, the airport security in Tokyo, which was very streamlined. It was so good. <laughs> like, so streamlined. It's everything the UK should be. But it's not. Um, and then we got some egg sandwiches <laughs> for dinner. And then got on the plane. And the journey back was longer by a couple of hours, um, so I think it was like 13 hours. But I was mentally prepared for what it was gonna be like because of the flight out. So I was like, do you know what? I have all the Harry Potter films on the flight. How many can I get through before I get home? And because I picked a film that made me feel comfortable and it made me feel like I was at home, I slept. I slept through like three of the films. I think I got to the end of Half Blood Prince and I slept and it was a lovely feeling to actually be able to sleep on this plane. Um there you go. Oh, 16 hours. <laughs> it was 16 fucking hell. Um, so this was us saying goodbye to Tokyo and I felt a mixture of sad, happy, grateful. It was just what I needed. I needed a reset. Like I wasn't healthy when I went out there like mentally and saying goodbye to Japan um it's not a goodbye forever it's literally it's just a see you soon but I'm very grateful for everything that I learned about myself and I could reset about myself and when I couldn't sleep through jet lag I thought through a lot of stuff that happened in the past year and I managed to make peace with myself which was very important and yeah <laughs> I think it helped little Heidi inside me as well um, as a child and I mean it was very important to me and I think it healed my child inner child a little bit and it was it was a trip of a lifetime and I know when I go back it's it will still be very special and it's gonna be so much fun when I go back because I know what to expect it's gonna be so good. <laughs> um, the first meal was this noodle and wasabi dish that knocked me for six because it was so strong, the wasabi. And then we had like an egg roll and I had like a little chocolate thingy, chocolate pudding. I can't remember what the main meal was. I think it was salmon and I had to give it to Spooky. Oh yeah, here's Brecky. So Brecky was really nice. 
it was egg. <laughs> so I think because I had so much egg in Japan, I realised I actually like it. Egg and mushroom, I like them now. And I've been making breakfast for myself every morning this week. Um, like from avocado to scrambled eggs. What else have I had? So yeah, I learned how to make avocado smash, which I was really proud of. Um, I learned how to make scrambled eggs, which I'd never made before. No judgments, please. I've had waffles. I've just branched out a little bit with my food because I want to learn how to cook as well. And I'm starting with breakfast. Um, <laughs> Hi, Turkey. Got to Half Blood Prince in 13 hours. Lol. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, that was them saying, we're in Turkey. <laughs> and then it was 3 hours 14 back to Birmingham. So by that point, it is 16 hours. Third brekkie, question mark. 17 hours chasing the night. So they made this, again, scrambled eggs. And they made this, like, ham and something toasty, which I just handed over to Spooky. But these scrambled eggs were really fucking nice. And you had, like, some fruit and stuff. And then you had some granola and some water. And then that was the descent over London into Birmingham. 17 hours completed it, mate. 20, including the three hours. So it took me 20 hours to get back to the UK. But I started literally on the other side of the world. It's insane how far we travelled. How far all these things travelled with us as well. <laughs> Hello UK. Obtained a blanket from Japan for the cats. We did. And Boots loves it. <laughs> Apparently I've lost half a stone in Japan and I'm the lightest I've been in many years. Time to keep up the walking, I guess. And I have kept up the walking and I have lost a bit more weight. Um, just from getting up from this desk. That's all it's took. Like, it's nothing crazy. Basically, I realise if I want to... <laughs> I realise in Japan if I want to live there, I need to get healthy, working on it, become a better cook, working on it, relax food habits and try others. So this is me saying I want to be pescatarian without actually saying it out loud because I know I might get a bit of backlash, like, but you're a vegetarian. I know, I'm going to be a pescatarian because it just is easier for me when I go back out there. Um, it's just going to be a bit of adjustment and I think it's going to hurt a little bit. <laughs> but that was me saying that's what I'm going to do without me saying it. Um, and that was the end of the Japan stuff. So I have Instagram stop please um I have got some TikToks to make and to send out and I do fully intend to start doing that tonight um because I want to have them all documented as I said I'm going back to Japan next year for for longer um with the intention perhaps maybe moving there in the future but if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but I would like to um I'm going to Tuscany in July um, I can do another stream like this for Tuscany um, because that's in Italy and I've not been to that part of Italy. I've only been to Rome, so I'm really excited. And then maybe somewhere in the winter, but I need to confirm everything before I announce anything. Um, but the main things that I'm taking away from this trip is I can travel 20 hours across the globe. I can do it. I can do long haul. I did it. I did it. I can adjust to another culture. I did it. I can take care of myself for 10 days away from the home. I did it. There is a life outside the desk. I knew it, but now I know it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot I'm learning from this trip. A lot of it is where to put my time and effort. Um, and yeah, I, I loved it. I know I spoke about it a lot before I went. I spoke about it a lot after I came back, but... It's ticked off my bucket list now like it's done um i will be finishing the stream here because i will be joining adric for his birthday at seven i think but i don't want to put words in his mouth um but if you have any questions about anything i've spoke about the vod will be going on youtube obviously the vod will be on here for like six weeks so you can always hey adric <laughs> um anything you want to have a question about you can like i'm open about japan um going forward the channel is going to be oh, i'm sorry <laughs> going forward the channel will be more of what i want to play rather than what i think other people want to see um 
it's definitely going to be very horror orientated because obviously you must have seen I fucking love horror games um, and I'll be streaming on different days depending on what real life says I'm now scheduling around real life because going outside has been the tonic I needed spending time with family going to Japan has been the tonic I needed Adric do you want to see something really fucking cool that I pulled do you want to see what I pulled right I pulled this as one of my last cards I opened. It was the Pikachu exclusive card in the pack, right? It's not Pikachu. Miradon! <laughs> it's Miradon. It's so cool, it's a shiny Miradon. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> I could show you the Pikachu card if you want, but I'm not gonna. Um, there was loads of different cards in there if you want to go back and watch the VOD. Um, but yeah, I need to put all my cool shit up somewhere. I've obviously got Totoro. I need to put, I think he's going to stay in my living room. Uh, Hamtaro, because Godzilla. Sleepy Pikachu. And all that. Um, but yeah, honestly, if you want to go to Japan, my advice is to not sit on it, it is to go. Like, you will not regret it. You will not regret it. So, next week, stream-wise, I'm a bit all over the place because I have plans. Um, like, for example, Spooky Friday is not going to be on Friday because I'm seeing anime at the cinema. I'm seeing the new film by the guy that did Weathering With You and Your Name. I'm so excited. Um, I think I have bowling booked on one day, but I can't remember which day we're doing. Um, so I may stream the Phasmo event that I've set up in Discord tomorrow, or do something before it and then do the Phasmo event. Um, I'll move Spooky uh, Friday to probably Thursday or Saturday. Um, I want to do a Final Fantasy stream, for sure. I need to finish Stardew next week, for sure, and start a new cozy game. So I will put a uh, schedule up in the Discord when I fucking get my mind around what I'm doing next week. <laughs> but thank you everyone for being here. It meant a lot to be able to do this stream. I um, will always look back at this stream. Sorry for crying at two points. <laughs> Speaking about my granddad is still very raw and talking about that shrine experience. I wanted to mention it, but bruh, like it's so fucking emotional. And obviously the first time I saw Tokyo, like I... I can't, like, it's just so emotional. We're gonna raid out. Um, who should we raid? Who shall we raid? Because I will be probably be back tomorrow. I think I've got nothing going on tomorrow. We could go raid. Wait, that person's not online anymore. Why is this not updating? <gasps> Why is it not updating? Um, look at Discord. Oh, Discord, who is playing now? Uh, uh, oh, okay, is there anyone that you guys want to raid? I could raid George, who's playing golf with friends. Um, I could raid RP Gamer, who's playing a game I can't even freaking pronounce. Disgaea? One complete. Tori, who's doing just chatting. Adrena, who's doing Grand Theft Auto 5. Or Treacle, who's doing Starbound. Any of them fight your boat? I suppose we could go raid Tori because Tori's also doing just chatting. I'm doing just chatting. I don't know what she's chatting about though. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a risk. <laughs> um, hey pups, I'm so sorry. I'm just finishing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, but welcome in, as always. I will be back tomorrow with Phasmo. I have decided I will stream Phasmo Easter tomorrow because I am intrigued what makes Phasmo Eastery. <laughs> now sign is six tomorrow on Discord if anybody wants to join in the lobbies. Um, I'll probably stream something a little bit beforehand. Chocolate egg collecting. Is that what it is? <laughs> we'll go raid Tori. Tori has her stream is called is not a phase mum and dad so I'm intrigued let's go raid um and I will see you all tomorrow for Phasmo goodies um and I'll see you later 
for Adric's birthday. Bye!